Here's just a, a glimpse of our server portfolio. Uh, the AT110 fits in the tower space, obviously, uh, for our left-hand side. And we have Rack and our Gemini, which is our multi-node and our blade. OK, so we've, we've gone through the background of Acer, the relationship with Bass, kind of the whole server and storage strategy with Acer. Let's get into the heart of this. This is really the, the focal point of the presentation today, and that's the Acer AT110F2. This is a great uh, entry-level tower product and uh, perfect price points and features and functionality. It's basically uh, based on the latest generation Xeon CPUs, uh, delivers that uh, great solution for like an SMB or a branch office type of environment um, with up to 25% performance improvement over the previous generation. So one of the things you might ask is, what do you mean previous generation? You guys just launched in, in February. What are you doing with the second generation already? Well, as I mentioned to you earlier, we did launch first in the Asia Pacific and the uh, EMEA regions. So they actually went out the door with the AT1. 10 F1. So that little F number, F in the number after it, that's, that's a generational nomenclature that we use. So if you see F1, that's a first generation. F2 is our second. So who, who are we targeting with this box? This is for that budget conscious SMB user, which is uh, what, 100% of them? Uh, I know price is always one of the big, the big uh, points that you have to focus on with, with this type of customer who are looking for that kind of that best cost per performance with room for expansion. And as I take you through the next few slides, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you pictures of the front and back, uh, it, the, the box itself, if you turn it to its side and take the cover off, so you can kind of see what the motherboard looks at. So looks like, so for you guys who actually build these uh, systems out, you'll get, an, uh, you'll get a glimpse of how things uh, look in there. And, um, you know, the, the room, the expandability and scalability of this is really good for uh, such a small box. Now here's a slide that uh, actually I worked on with Bass. You know, we, we kind of did a few of these presentations, and uh, actually uh, Scott Hooper and I uh, had a good discussion on, you know, the, what we really need to talk about the fact that if if somebody is, you know, using workstations today, for example, and they're looking to migrate up to a server, what is uh, a good, you know, what what are some of the reasons why you would choose an entry level server, uh, for example, over a workstation? Now. Now, certainly, we're not saying that a server is, is the best solution in every single case. But you know, for those people who are kind of on the fence or not certain if they, hey, I've had, I've had workstations in my business now. You know, I'm just wondering if you know, the workload that I'm putting out there now, is it better on a workstation or a server? That's kind of what I want to take you through here. And uh, so again, four kind of pillars here, performance, expandability, efficiency, and price. So let's look at. You know why you would choose a server over a uh, workstation uh, in this entry level space from a performance perspective. So what this server has, we, you know, we have the Intel chipset, right? So you have a true server chipset to handle a true server type workload, right? So that that's really the, the key there. The the chipset itself and the processor are are designed for this type of workload, uh, the server type of workload. So like your databases. You know, exchange, um, diff, you know, running your business apps, things like that. That's that's really what the chipset and the processor are designed for, and that's what you get in, in an entry level a server box. Um, right now, you can expand up to 16 gigs of memory. I know we're working on the next uh, level of memory, which would um, allow this to expand up to 32 gigs of memory, and that's you know that's something that's coming um, in the next couple of quarters. From a pricing perspective. We offer the Windows 2008 Foundation uh, Release 2 OS, and essentially, you what that that operating system provides is like SMB type features and functionalities in the operating system, but it puts it at a very uh, attractive price point for uh, this type of box. Which you know, this customer buying this is going to be very price sensitive. So every everything that goes in this box, you need to really look at uh, the pricing. And I'll talk to you in a in a a couple minutes about you know one of the key benefits that you get with this foundation operating system. Expandability. You get up to eight terabytes of internal storage. You have four drive bays. So if you look at your two terabyte drives, um, eight, up to eight terabytes, which is a, a very good 
capacity point for this market. You have four expansion slots for attaching external storage. You have three PCIe and one legacy PCI slot. Um, you've got two media expansion bays, so if you want to add, you know, like an additional DVD drive or even integrate like an internal tape drive, which we also offer, you have that capability as well. And then from an efficiency standpoint, you've got the Energy Star certified uh, 80 plus power supply in there that's, you know, able to handle a fully loaded system and, and, and you know, be able to expand up to the power capacity that's needed but actually throttles back down uh, to only draw the power that it needs based on the configuration in the box. So I think that's, yeah, that's a really good, you know, having an efficient power supply in there, customers very price sensitive, you know, they, they're looking at all the, all the dollars going in and out of the business. I think ha this is another key selling point for you. Okay, let's take a, uh, a look at the front and the back of this box. And, you know, again, I'll just, I'll just kind of briefly go over some of this. Um, you can see the media bays up at the top left-hand corner. You've got two USB 2.0 ports available on the front. Um, if you flip the guy around on his back, um, you, you can see the location of all the components there, power supply, fans, and so forth, the, the four uh, slots for expansion. And you have an additional six USB 2.0 ports. So if you count the two up front, total of eight USB 2.0 ports. Um, for um, adding optional type devices to this server. Now for the, for the ones uh, that are viewing this webinar right now, this is probably one of the more interesting slides for you. Okay, let's take, let's, let's take this server, flip it on its side, and take the cover off, and now you get a shot at the uh, motherboard and the location of everything within the server. So I'm going to start in the upper left-hand corner. Um, power supply location, um, and you see the location of the system fan. You have low voltage option processors uh, for you know that high efficiency type operation that we talked about. The location of the PCIe and PCI slots. You have three: um, the 16, the 8, and the 4 PCIe X, X16, X8, X4, and then the one legacy PCI slot. Because I know uh, PCI is is as as we move forward, it continues to um, become more and more outdated, but I know a lot of these customers have, have legacy type devices they like to connect, so having that PCI slot available is important for that segment. Upper right hand corner, uh, you can see your two uh, optical bays, and um, below, directly um, below that and to the left a little bit is the location for the four memory DIMMs. And then um, at the bottom right-hand corner is the location of where you have the four three-and-a-half-inch hard drive bays. So again, this you know for those of you who build these systems and want to take a, kind of a closer look inside, this is a great view here to kind of see how everything's laid out, easy to access. So if you're looking to service this, you can see that uh, it's very easy to get to all the components and uh, swap things out. So. Um, Talk a little bit about the uh, maximizing your profitability here and, and options, um, looking at our option kits. So uh, in addition to the server, we have a wide range of options, hard drives, memories, HBAs, um, tape backup, even, even software. So we have a comprehensive list of that, and you'll actually find that on the long specs that I referenced earlier in the presentation, along with the part numbers and descriptions. Um, easy to customize and re readily available inventory of mainstream option kits that cuts the delivery lead time. As I mentioned, our parts depot is in Temple, Texas. So uh, whenever an op you know you have to send a system in, or if you have to get a replacement part, uh, shipping out of Temple. Price to market, and we do not add the brand luxury tax. And uh, I mentioned that earlier, right? That's the example I gave you was the proprietary hard drive that HP sells. Uh, that's a hard drive, uh, that hard drive bay you have to purchase and put in the ProLiance. We, we do not add options like that. We strictly stick to the industry standard type options that are available out there in the market. Uh, the commonality of our options across the platform that off offers less risk. And essentially what that's saying is, hey, if, if, if you expand beyond the AT110, the options that go in that go in the other server. So, you know, as you expand the other servers, if you have any inventory of the AT110 options, they will also work in the other servers. 
and we have a very simplified warranty policy. Uh, any option that goes with inside the server, not, you know, so anything, if you open up the box and, and it's an option like memory or, or, you know, internal tape drive, something like that, that takes on the warranty uh, of the server. So we like to call that a system matching warranty. So regardless of the individual option warranty, um, it automatically takes on the option or, or the uh, terms of the server warranty, which kind of keeps things very simple. So there's no guessing like, oh, well, this, this NIC card has this warranty term, but this tape drive has this one. It, it's, it's, it's irrelevant. If it's inside the server, it takes on the warranty terms of that server. So I mentioned a while ago uh, about the foundation OS, and I would, I would talk a little bit more about that, and that's what I'm going to do here. This is the Windows 2008 foundation operating system. Um, as I mentioned, it's kind of right-sized for this SMB customer in this box. Um, so be, because they have the right set of features and functionalities uh, in there, they're able to offer a much better price point. And one of the key things I want to point out here, if you look at the right-hand side under the target, um, you know, this, it is for the single processor, but you have a 15-user license that comes uh, with the foundation operating system. Um, I'm not sure if any of you have ever priced out the individual a la carte licensing pricing, but it's, uh, it's significant. So if you, add, if you went out and bought 15 licenses a la carte, it, it could actually add up to a couple, couple thousand dollars, which is much more than the server itself. So the fact that the foundation operating system allows for uh, 15 users, I think, is a real key selling point that you guys can pass on to your customers in terms of, uh, you know, looking at the foundation operating system. Okay. Well, that uh, concludes the material that I was going to cover. Um, what I've done on this slide is I've put a couple of uh, contact pieces here. If you look on the left-hand side, we have the BAS contact information. Uh, you can go to their website, BASScomputers.com, which I'm sure you've been to hundreds of times. There's their phone number listed. And uh, they're your first point of contact. And I uh, highly recommend that you get in touch with them for more information. And if you still have questions or you want to reach out, have any uh, questions or suggestions, uh, I've included both myself and our primary server product manager, Kamesh Kumar. Uh, you see our email addresses there. Uh, feel free to reach out. And like I say, if you have any questions or suggestions, we're definitely open to it. Uh, we're very approachable. And uh, uh, with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Scott. I really appreciate your time, and uh, thanks, and good luck with selling these Acer products.